Hey there, I wanted to do a speed test before I got started um, because I, didn't, I wasn't sure. It was acting kind of funny. I was afraid that it might not be working right. So, Everybody doing well? You can hear me okay? I see a green dot down there, so that means my mic is working. Let's see who do we have. Kimberly, Roger, Pepper, Bonnie, Verdi, Kathy, Boss, how's it going? Keith, let's see. Ed. Jim, let's see. Uh, okay, that's about everybody here. Wait, up here. Oh, Dennis, there's Dennis. Oh, and Peter. Hey, Peter, how's it going? Back for more, <laughs> more for, for more torture. We're going to try to get the, um, the bass chord thing going on. So you're going to be able to be a one-man band or one-woman band. Uh, so the idea, a uh, big part of the whole concept of of the Travis pattern, and my, my speculation is that Merle Travis didn't have any friends or didn't have any potential bandmates when he was younger, so he came, came up with this technique. Um, but basically, the, the whole point of it is to be able to play a bass line and a, and a, a harmony or chord, almost like a, it's, it's kind of almost feels like, I was mentioning it yesterday, like a reggae, you know, mm -ta, ta, reggae on the upbeats, the chords are on the upbeats and the bass line. Um, kind of oompa also. So that's what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna try to get that down. And then if that goes well, we can start start adding some more elements to the pattern and uh it gets it gets more complex <laughs> like i said yesterday and we're doing these um we're doing these patterns um shoot come on there we go we're doing these patterns uh it you know one a day kind of thing or two a day and normally i would give you maybe two a week and you would have a whole week to work on them so that's kind of why it's it's nice to have these videos stay up there. And it's also nice to have these, uh, I'm scanning right now yesterday's work because I'm going to add to it rather than rewrite it out. Uh, let's see. And so, and good morning uh, or afternoon for most of you. Some of us are on the West Coast, but pretty much everybody else is already, unless you're in Hawaii, it's... Uh, later in the day. Hey there, Hook's here. You guys all have to say hi to each other. <laughs> so, all right. So that is scanned. Let me do the thing. Exit. Okay. Rotate. Save as PDF. Finger picking 11. So I'll go ahead and put this. Let me get that Discord um, link. And then um, somebody asked me on Facebook, "Is where, can I post it anywhere? And I, I tried to upload the PDFs to my Facebook page and it wouldn't, they don't uh, upload PDFs. So I may have to basically do like a screenshot of them and send them as, um, let's see, invite people, copy. It's a different code every day. So here's the, uh, let's see, where's my family? Actually, Jack is coming over uh, in about an hour and a half with his girlfriend. They're going because we, you know, a little more private than the building. So they're going to come over here and hang out by the pool and they're going to make us dinner tonight. So, uh, and Alex is coming over. Alex was over last night. Uh, I was having fun with my, my fretless, check this out. Totally getting, totally getting a, so I took a, 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 a loop or a loop, an oop. A ukulele, I can't say the word, a uke, um, that I got uh, on a, actually I was on a, we went up to uh, Ventura uh, and Oxnard and there's a couple of guitar stores. Up. Actually, there's a guitar store that has ukuleles and there's just a ukulele store. And so I was in the ukulele store and there was a lady trying to sell her ukuleles to them and, and they weren't interested because they had plenty. And uh, so 
I said, well, I might be interested. And so she didn't have it with her, but she brought, we went to lunch, Beth and I did, and then she showed up at the restaurant with this and I gave her 60 bucks and she was, yeah, that's fine. And I mean, I don't know what these go for, but I know it's probably more than 60 bucks. I think it's solid Koa, or walnut, it looks like walnut, but it's solid. Um, anyway, I already had, I, I, the same day I bought a Martin, I've always wanted a Martin ukulele, so I bought this. So this is a soprano and this was a long neck soprano. So you can see how much longer the neck is. I'd never seen one of these before. I actually want to get another one of these. I'd like to get one with geared tuners because um, I hate the <laughs> I hate the one to one ratio. Um, I think Roger, Roger, you're here, right? I saw Roger. That was really cool of you to do all of that. Where's Roger? I know I saw him here. Uh, Roger did a whole. Yeah, there he is. Roger did a whole um, like <laughs> the 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 uh, mockups for the for the guitar hammer for this thing. He totally nailed it. It's perfect, you know. And uh, it's just funny because I felt like if I released it, and I, you know, this was when my friend was having a real hard time with work and, find, and he found a job, so that's kind of why it stopped in its tracks. But when he re when um, we were going to release this, I was thinking I'll probably get lawsuits from people that you dinged up my guitar. I'm like, I didn't ding up your guitar, <laughs> but you know, people <laughs> do stupid stuff. But uh, you know, I can't think of any kid that didn't hit their strings with something. Uh, in a band or whatever. But anyway, so this is, so I took this ukulele because I had two. Actually, it's kind of cool that I did it with the, the long neck one. It actually makes more sense. Uh, it's easier to play. I got more nuance, but I, I was I was doing some messing around. I got asked if I played Ko Kodo the other, uh, you know, last year. And I said, no. And it, Kodo is a giant instrument. I mean, it's probably very expensive to get a Kodo. And uh, as far as like, um, having it stored somewhere it just it would take up half of this room they're so big pretty cool though huh <laughs> So, yeah, you probably, Roger, you probably know people that can actually manufacture, you know, do prototypes. And um, I actually mailed this one to a, the guy in, in uh, Illinois where there was a, like a, a, I went right straight to a miller and uh, a metal miller. And they said, um, you know, like I said, it was like $8 per unit or something like that. It was pretty expensive. And probably most of it was, he was probably gonna have to do the drawings and the, the specs and everything, because I didn't have anything at that point. Um, and so. It kind of has a hammer dulcimer sound. Um, it's really hard to. Sip? Sip for what? What did I do? <laughs> you got a new one now that hey i changed shirts <laughs> so, did i touch my face i probably touched my face oh i changed guitars oh well you guys got to pay attention I, yeah i i don't have to pay attention because um uh yeah, I, I like the sound of that. And like, oh, and I don't know if you can hear the nuance of it, but like um, when I play with the, the the stainless steel half, it's got a rubber handle on it. And this is just from a triangle, um, a, you know, like a triangle from an orchestra. Um, this is the mallet from a triangle. I don't even know where the triangle is, but. And it's easier when you're, I hold it kind of like, like this and let it bounce. But I don't know if you can hear the subtle the difference. It's not that subtle in here, but it sounds like it sounds like it's in the next room. It's really cool sounding. And it, in, and then it's got a little like ball at the end where I could technically, if I got good enough, I could probably hit individual strings. But uh, I yeah, that wasn't necessary. But I actually. Um, uh, 
where's uh, uh Roger? I had um I was I sat next to a, a um <clears throat> I sat next to a, a a patent attorney on a flight to somewhere I can't remember where. Um, I think I was coming from Chicago because I think he was from Chicago, and uh, I was telling him about this because that was right when I was thinking about doing this. And the idea was to sell this with a DVD that would have PDFs of like some songs of you know uh, tablature of songs, and also like a me teaching the lesson, which is funny because back then I really didn't have much of a YouTube channel. I didn't have a lot of experience with the camera or or doing this kind of thing. I think I'd be better at it now than I would have then. Um, so it, yeah, so I, I thought, you know, I could maybe sell it for 30 bucks or something like that, you know, 29 95 for the guitar hammer. People have since released ones, but not quite the same as what I'm doing. They, they're more, it looks like literally a hammer, but I've seen a couple different ones come out since I started thinking about it. And he said he, you couldn't patent this because it's kind of a pre-existing thing. He said you could trademark it if you put like, Put my, if I put name on there or something like that, the Straley hammer, you know, or something like that, the Scarlet hammer, make it sound all very German. So, so anyway, that was, I like, I like, you know, I have all sorts of ways. I've got a million picks. We've talked about this before, you know, here's a felt pick, which is bass players use these a lot in the sixties. Um, these are Wigan. That's a Wigan bluegrass pick, which is a really good sounding pick on the acoustic. This is a Wigan um, gypsy jazz pick, which I love. I love playing, like solos on acoustic guitar with this pick because it really just sounds beautiful. Here's a jellyfish pick. It's basically somebody just encased some, these look like old, like D strings. And then this got wet though. You can see it's all rusty. It just happened. I don't know. Here's a rubber pick. So if my fingers get sore on the bass, this is one of those stupid blue chip picks. It's like $35. Seriously, for this pick, it's $35. The crazy thing though is that it does actually sound really good. I'm like, how does that happen? Now it's already pre-beveled and everything. Um, I don't know what the they make it out of. Here's some other big, heavy, thick picks that are cheaper than the Wigan. Very, very thick. Here's an here's another Wigan. This is the fat, I think called the Fat Boy. It's really look how thick that is. I think it's seven millimeters. Uh let's see. Oh, yeah. There, here's a Wigan. Um, we can tell I like Wigan picks. This is a Wigan mandolin pick, which I really like. It's basically symmetrical. It's got like it's very rounded edges. And I learned from watching, you know, like the best mandolin players that they actually kind of turn the pick and go off the, they kind of roll the pick over the strings and it makes a much better tone than kind of flat picking it. Here's the, here's what the edge uses for you two. This is how it gets his sound with scraping the strings with this part of the pick. These are made in West Germany. Uh, I forget the name of the brand, but I, I have it bookmarked so I can buy them whenever I need them. And these are the, this is a thick one, but this is, I'm using gravity picks mostly now. Um, I used this last night on a record. This is a very um, thin, well, 0.73 Dunlop nylon. So I like these Dunlop picks too, because they, you know, the color color codes you can get, you can quickly see, oh, the black one's a one millimeter and then the gray one and they get lighter and lighter as you go. Like, like this one is, where's the, I think I have, yeah, here's one that's really light. This is 60. See how light it is. Um, yeah, even have, is this a sixpence? Yeah, here's a sixpence. No, this is a pound coin. Sorry. I have a sixpence in here somewhere, but sixpence is what, um, Brian May uses and a peso is what, I don't have a peso. I should get a peso. That should be very easy to get. Uh, what, um, here's another, somebody's copying that Wigan pick, or maybe this is the original, uh, but this is another mandolin pick. Uh, by uh, Daw what's it? I can't think of his name. Oh, here's a, here it is. Here's a sixpence. So isn't that interesting? So I, I mean, and this is just in this thing. I have a whole drawer full of things. Uh, I also recently bought these prime tones. Somebody recommended these. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dennis has a pick. I mean, pick. <laughs> what's your most What's my most famous pick? My most favorite pick is probably right now. I really, really like these um, gravity picks. Uh, they're about five bucks a piece. Um, I've gotten better at not losing picks. I, I, you know, for years and years and years, it's funny. I don't even see one. For probably 25 years, I used these. Uh, yeah, here it is. The purple Dunlops. Oh, here's one. I'm trying to find one that's not worn out so you can see the logo. 
I think it's Durlin. Is it the Durlin or the, I'm not sure. I think it's a Durlin 1.5. So I use these for a long time, but the thing I like about the, the gravity picks is they have a little bit of a rough edge to them. So I can kind of get that U2 sound a little bit, a little bit more scrapiness, a little more attack on the string. And they're a little bit bigger. So they're a little bit more comfortable in the hand. Um, and then um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Bora, Bora Chick Lint. Uh, is it a rule of thumb that you should use a thicker pick for electric than acoustic? For me, it is, but not necessarily. Uh, there are some great players that use thin picks on electric. Uh, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I thought, in fact, RJ uh, Ronquillo, who, uh, who was also another YouTuber, he recently started switching to thinner picks. Uh, it's funny, too, because the, I don't know if you saw that Rick Beato thing where they're talking about thinner strings uh, and they sound the tone is better on like nines and eights eights i've never had a pair of eights on or set of eights on a guitar uh yeah the jellyfish picks are crazy i'm trying to find another one of those um i've only got the one and i actually like it it's got a cool you know like i said there's a lot of times where i want especially on single note stuff if i'm doing something for some kind of weird uh eerie score soundtrack thing it really is a cool sound and i'm really bummed i've tried to find more of these i'd buy you know if somebody had a box of them i'd probably buy them but they they uh, i mean i i only need a couple more because i'm just afraid i'm going to lose this or break it sevens that's crazy verdi that someone actually uses sevens uh, the zz top guy uh, uh billy gibbons that's i didn't realize i knew he used thin strings crazy um let's see uh, have I seen the thick picks? I'm not sure. The, I've not seen. I'm not seen one much thicker than this this Wigan Fat Boy, which is like I said, seven seven millimeters thick, which is really thick. Um, but yeah, I generally uh, use a thinner pick on acoustic, especially if I'm strumming. If I'm playing single notes, I might use a heavier pick. Um, one trick too I've always done, like with picks, is if I'm strumming, I'll I'll expose more of the pick. Okay. So you can see the pick clearly when I'm strumming, like probably it's going to be like that much. Okay. And I'll hold it looser. So it moves more. So I can use a heavier pick, but, but, but I can give it less resistance by not holding it too tight. And then if I go to solo with the same pick, I can just choke down on it. So very little is exposed and I hold it tight. And now it's a, almost acts like a, a thick or heavy pick. So I can go from kind of a thin pick sound to a heavy pick sound in the same pick. I'll give you an example. Um, so like here's, I'm, I'm here. I'm exposing a lot of pick, holding it loose. Now I'm going to choke down on it. So, so now I'm kind of using it. I'm using it more as a heavy pick. Don't usually play like that. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it closer to the mic. Um, so yeah, so, so kind of you can do both a little bit. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm getting behind on the comments. Uh, seashell. I don't have any tortoise shell picks. Those are technically illegal to buy or sell. But if you happen to have one, it's not illegal. Um, Oh, Dennis clarified his question. Let's see. Oh, famous guitars. No, not really. I mean, specifically from them, no. I know people collect those. Um, Alex may have some of those. Here's another really thick pick. Now, who makes this one? This is the Big Stubby. Oh, this is a Dunlop pick. Big Stubby. I probably got that at the NAMM show or something like that. Or maybe I oftentimes will, if I see picks I've never seen before and they're kind of weird, I will buy them just to see if I really like the tone they may come in handy for something. But no, I don't have any famous. You, you said famous. I just thought you meant my favorite, like it was a, a language barrier thing. Um, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I am tired. What, this is day 38, is it not? Um, so let's see. Okay, so I think I got those questions. Uh, Dennis clarified. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, 
I think I'll make one out of deer antler. That would be cool. Um, I'm trying to think. I do have bone. Um, I do have ones. Yeah, and I also like, like, I use bottle caps for picks. And you're like, how do you use a bottle cap for picks? Well, I scrape the strings with it. And, that, and I can use that on any instrument. Sounds really cool on any instrument. Electric, mandolin, especially. Uh, and so I so I collect bottle caps because you never know what, what the tone is going to be. This was a, from a milk carton. Very different tone. Uh, but I really like this one, and I'm like, what is this from? It doesn't say. It's got a – so do you know? It's got a star in the cap. Like, you can't see that. Yeah, there you go, a little bit. It's got like a star. It's like a six-point star. Um, and I think it was from a Pepsi cap, but I've since bought Pepsi bottles. Here's one that's from a Coke, and it's just – it's a little – I don't know. It's – no friction. Very little friction on that one. It, it's funny, huh? I even bought like a, a thimble. This is like a, a, a porcelain thimble. Because I thought, oh, maybe that would sound like something. Um, this is made out of a coconut. This is a coconut pick. It's got definitely, I, I may keep that in here. It's got definitely a softer tone. Like I said, I got a whole drawer of them over here. <laughs> This one's just a weird one I've not seen. It's uh, who makes this? Oh, this is called Chicken Picks. So it's kind of a big, thick pick, but it's got like a beveled edge on it, which is, you know. I mean, I don't know. That one's a. I've got. Here's like the Dunlop the one millimeters because I will buy them sometimes like this because I lose those a lot when I'm playing out live. And then here's like, here's the weekend. I got a bunch of the bluegrass picks just in case you could see they're not, I mean, this is like, there's four picks in there. I think this is like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, nope. So I've got another one of the, the gypsy jet. Oh, I got two more of these. So oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I don't need to buy any more of those. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I've got a bunch of the Wiegands I haven't even opened because I just buy them because I. And then, oh, like, here's the, like, here's the Dunlop. <laughs> Look how pale it gets. Like, it's a white. I mean, that's like thinner than a playing card. It's taking a while to get to the lesson. But so anyway, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really, and it's kind of cool. I actually, I hate to admit it, but I had a, um, uh, a uh, keyboard player tell me, give me a guitar tip. And it was basically, let's see if I can do it with this guitar. Um, should be able to. Basically, like if you're, say we're playing in the key of C or something, um, you capo at the 10th fret. Okay. And then play like a D shape would be C. And then pick, oh, I'm not going to use that pick. That's too thin. Uh, I'm going to use this pick. Pick way down at the bridge. It sounds like an auto harp. If I go to an A shape, that's G. If I go to a G shape, that's F. And I back to. And a keyboard player showed me that trick, and I was like, "Dang it! <laughs> I should have known that trick." I didn't need a keyboard player to tell me that. Okay, let's see. I'm I'm getting way behind on here. Columbia, my shirt. Yeah, it's just the shirt I got. <laughs> I haven't been to Columbia. Some manufacturer went to Columbia. Oh, Tom about Pepper. Somebody's asking me a question. Uh, or was it you, Pepper? Uh, oh, one of those giant picks like that, like a, you know, a joke pick. I used to have one. Uh, oh, from Peter and Pepper. Okay, sorry, sir. Oh, from Derek. Oh, wow, I'm, I'm way behind on the chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, Derek, let's see. I've never used Deva picks or Dava picks. I've never heard of them. But that's not unusual. Um, and then uh, I don't, yeah, I don't have any picks from famous guitar players like standing in the audience, getting one thrown at you or whatever. I mean, I may have some, but I don't remember. I know that like, um, I mean, uh, Rick Nielsen you know, the, from Cheap Tick Trick gave me one at the NAMM show when we were talking. He goes, here, have a pick. <laughs> so, um, oh, okay. Uh, okay, you put, okay, let me look at the Discord real quick. Um, uh, 
Let's see. Oh. Yeah, I've not seen that. That's interesting. I mean, that that could come in real handy if you had bad arthritis, I think, huh? That's weird. I'd be curious what it sounds like. You know, like I said, I'm always looking for new things. Those are the kind of things, if it's a guitar store, you know, $5 throw, you know, that's the kind of thing I'd pick up. But I can also find stuff like at hardware stores, um, you know, like Spring for, for uh, electric guitar. It works better on electric guitar. Um, uh, Nels Klein uses a Spring. Nels Klein's a guitar player for Wilco, and I just touched my face. So the drinking game is if I, t if I touch my face, if I refer to myself in the third person, which I only do to if I'm thirsty. Um, oh wait, we got the Gary's posted them all up there, but <laughs> you may have to go up a ways in the live chat. Uh, but if you're keeping track at home, uh, so if I touch my face, if I refer to myself in the third person, if I say I had a band in high school called, if I change guitars, now if I just put down this guitar and pick it back up again, that doesn't count. You can't take a drink. I have actually have to literally change guitars. Um, if I say, uh, uh, let's say if I if I mention the fact that I played all the guitars on Apex Legends. Now, when I'm recounting the rules, uh, and I think I think Gary's got some unofficial ones on his. He sent me <laughs> to my to to uh, to uh, my Gmail account. He sent me uh, <laughs> some unofficial ones too. Uh, if I forget to change, if I don't, if I don't, if I wear the same shirt two days in a row, that's not really technically one. Um, if I pick up a guitar and don't realize it's in a weird tuning, I did that yesterday after I told you I would never do that again. I picked up my guitar and it was all tuned down a half step. So I didn't notice it. And somebody, somebody was, I may have been Gary said, is that, are you down a half step? Cause I'm playing something that nobody can play along with me. So generally I'm standard to a 440 tune. So if you get your guitar tuned that way, we should be lined up. Kathy's going to flag. Uh, so, so, um, Okay, and then Derek had a question. Oh no, okay, that was the the Dava picks. Okay, we saw that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, the, you know one of the tricks to get the guitar pick out of the sound hole, um, and I, you know, I hopefully I won't destroy anything. But I got a pick in there. Basically, what I do is I try to get it opposite the sound hole so I can see it. Of course, now I, I don't. I could spend the next ten minutes just doing that. <laughs> this is great TV, you know. This is real life right here. Okay, where is the pick? See, I don't want to, that's what I'm worried about. I'm going to bang the, oh, there it is. Okay. Ah, you went too far. But basically I try to get it directly opposite and just flip like that and it usually comes right out. There it is, boom. Um, so that's usually my trick for getting the pick out of the guitar. That's why I play electric. Okay, um, let's see. So I saw that. Okay, I saw your big pick question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dennis, I thought you were, when you said famous, I thought you meant favorite. <laughs> What's your favorite? You know what I mean, right? I mean, trust me, if I try to speak Dutch, you don't want to hear me even try. Um, let's see. Okay, other questions. Tom, Pepper, about, okay, I think I got that. Yeah, that's a crazy pick. Mugu, what, what did Mugu Mugu say? Glad to see you're on. My phone didn't notify me. <laughs> Don't worry, we haven't even started the lesson. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Yep, yep. That's fine, Mugu. We haven't done anything. Just talking about guitar picks and stuff like that. Ben, hey, how's it going? Hope everybody's... Oh, it's freezing... It's 96 here today, <laughs> so I'm sweating in here. We don't have the air on yet. This house stays really cool, though. I mean, it, it'll hit 100, and our house will stay under 80, which is nice. I don't know why. It's, it's, it was, we, we didn't do anything. It's just very well insulated, double-pane windows, plantation shutters, which really help because you can shut those and add, you know, add another layer. Um, okay, everybody saying hi? Okay, oh, man, more questions. Wait. Or no, did I just? Okay, I'm going to go back from here. See, these are not timed, but Kathy, thank you so much for, okay. Oh, to your mess. Oh, you, okay. You sent the, yeah, I saw. Okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. I'm caught up. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me know where you got, where it got that. I'm sure I can find that if I just do a little, um, and like the tortoise shell picks, which are what everybody used back in the sixties, um, fifties and sixties. 
Uh, and that's what those, you know, the fender picks are supposed to look like. I don't even have, but they're supposed to look like tortoise shell picks. And like, you'll get things like this at the NAM show. They're promotional picks. They're not usually, this is for uh, Caitlin bread, uh, you know, um, pedals, but you know, you pick those up just for fun. Usually I would pick them up to bring to my daughter. She's got a big jar of picks, or, you know, or stuff. It was kind of like your parents bringing back matchsticks from bars and restaurants, you know, matchbook, you know, like that kind of thing. It's like collecting stamps. It's kind of a fun thing to collect. If I change picks, no, no, we're not going to change picks. If I, I mean, take sips when I change picks. <sighs> Verdi just wants to take a sip. Verdi, how many, we're up to like 30, 30, 40 seconds between cigarettes now, right? We're not supposed to be using a pick at all. And I've got, I think I got a new battery in this. Let me make sure. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, plug this like this, and go like this. Boom. And that will help you see my hands because I'm going to be doing. So we're going to continue with this. We're going to continue with the C7 chord. Um, here's the C7 chord. Make this if you're not typing comments to each other. <laughs> you guys. I'm watching this and I'm going, you guys don't even have a guitar in your hand. Okay, so um, we were going back and forth. Now, this is a C7 chord, but then we're going to move our third finger down to the, uh, the bottom string to play the fifth. So we're playing root and then fifth. You can even just practice that. And you'll notice I'm not doing the classical technique so much where I've got my hand my wrist arched like this. I'm going to lay it more flat for country type stuff. Um, somebody was saying, I forget who it was, you were asking about muting. Okay, now hit the thumb on the fifth string and then the fourth string and then the move. I got to get this guitar fixed. It's got a rattle. You can hear it right there. And that's where we, and this is the top line is what that looks like in music notation. Boom, bum, boom. See the root, the, the C note is the root here, C. And then this is the fifth. Boom, 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 four. One, three, four, one. And this is, the, this is what the C7 chord looks like with that G added. This is not really playable on guitar. This is playable. And if you got rid of the C note, this would be playable. Uh, but anyway, so there's, and then there's our, fourth string, we're going to bounce our thumb to fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. You can just treat this as almost like tab. This is the fifth string note. This is the sixth string note. This is the fourth string note, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? And um, this, did I upload this to the Discord? I did not. I'm going to upload it to the Discord right now. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to upload. Um, okay, here we go. Upload. Yep. So this is that, it's in Discord now. Um, I still need to um, work with the OBS. I'm gonna work with the OBS and hopefully I'll be able to have, like I'll be able to put that over here in the corner or something so you can be looking at that and I can be playing. You know, I've been saying that, I go, I wish I could have it right here. Well, I found out that it's just a simple free software that I downloaded that I can do some of that kind of stuff. And I actually can have switchers here where I can change between scenes. So if I wanna have two cameras or whatever, um, I can set that up, it just means more work. More work is probably not going to happen, is it? So this is what we're trying to get here. But now what we want to do is when we play, when we play the fourth string with our thumb, we want to grab the sec, uh, the first finger on the third string, like that. And you can just practice that. So now you don't have to worry about this hand yet. You can just, in fact, we could even do it with open strings. So thumb on the fifth string and then fourth and third string together. It should sound like that. Nice, Rick. You're up to three and a half, uh, 45 minutes between. Nice cigarettes. Good for you. Did you hear the story about they were thinking about hand, giving people, oh, they're doing it with doctors. They're giving them nicotine patches because apparently nicotine fights the coronavirus. Have you seen that story? So smokers are less likely to get it or die from it. <laughs> That's 
It's like, oh my gosh. And I was telling people originally, well, stop smoking. That's your first thing, you know, because it's a lung disorder. Yeah, the small picks are, I just don't like the tiny picks. They're just not hard. Emma was going to make, do that for a while. She's going to make earrings out of guitar picks and sell them on like Etsy. And then we found people selling them for like $2 and it was like, uh, not worth the work. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. Now, if we can, we can go uh, thumb on the fifth string and then fourth and third string and then go down to the sixth string. And then it should sound like this. Not really musical because it's just open strings. In context. Hey, Verdi found a smoking cigarette emoji. Oh, oh, Bonnie Lee and Jim. Oh, funny. <laughs> Bonnie, you're married to Jim. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know that. I guess your name is now Barbara, though. Uh-oh. Jalapeno cheddar bo- bites it. Oh, yeah. I know those things at Burger King. And you can see where it can be fun. At. And again, the muting is happening on my left hand. I'm, I'm, I'm lip, I'm lip. In fact, I'm lifting after I hit the two strings together. (laughs) Clorox is the latest cure. Yeah, I don't think so. With a sunburn chaser. Okay, now, over the G chord, G chord, well, let's not, I'm not, I wish I could hear you play and see if you could play this. Of course, most of you, I, all I would hear is clickety, clickety, click. I wouldn't hear any guitar from most of you. So again, I'm playing this chord. So I'm going from this chord, this C7, to this one. Basically, so all I'm doing is I'm moving the third finger down to the sixth string from the fifth string to the sixth string to, to follow the thumb. Now, on the G7 chord or the G7 6 chord, which I love that, if you just take these three notes here and move them up a string, you get this really cool, and that's three, two, three, zero, zero, zero. That's I'm calling it G7 6. You could call it G13, but there's no ninth in there. So oops. So it's kind of hard to call it a ninth. Yeah, C7 over G. Correct, Bob. That's exactly right. Uh, Norman, my dad cured me when I was 13 or 14 or so. so. Oh, said if I smoke a pack of players straight off, he'd let me smoke. I think I got to number four before being violent. Yeah, that was a common. Yeah, my parents smoked. They started smoking when they were like 15. And I just never, never got into it. My sisters both smoke. My, li- my little sister, I think, still does occasionally. So. Um, so on this one, we actually have to reverse. Yesterday, remember, I kind of came up with an exercise where we could practice going from the C thumb pattern to the G thumb pattern. Because on the G, we're going uh, fifth or sixth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. So it's a six, four, five, four pattern. The, the C was six or five, four, six, four. We were doing this. But on the G, we're going. Which works nice because that means we're hitting that. The, basically, we're going back and forth between two notes, but we're creating this is going to be part of our chord. Um, but we're going. One, two, three, four, one, two, boom, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the nice thing about that B is it leads nice to the C chord. It's a chromatic, you know, leading tone to the C chord. Uh. I have to practice one. Good for you, Bob.
Now, Verdi, do you exercise at all? Do you like play? Do you play soccer or tennis or basketball or anything? Because that makes it also harder to smoke. My mom quit smoking when she got strep throat one time in the sixties, back in the sixties. So that allowed her to quit. Sorry, we're talking. I'm talking. We've got a lot of history with the people here on the live chat, and um, I'm going to touch my face so we can all take a drink. That's one of the drinking rules. We have to stay hydrated, so make sure you have some libations handy. Uh, I've got water and I've got straw, St. Arbucks. Um, yeah, everybody smoked in the 60s. That's what I loved about it. It was so fun watching uh, <laughs> Mad Men, you know, like everybody's smoking. People don't realize it was really that bad. <laughs> it was really that bad. I mean, nightclubs were crazy and airplanes. Oh, it was awful. Before they had the, even, I mean, even after they had the smoking section, it was awful. So the idea is to take that. And so what we've got, we're adding the, the third string and with our first finger, every time we pluck the fourth string with our thumb, we can add that. So it's kind of like we've got this thing going on where we've got a bass, right? Your thumb is doing the bass and then your thumb and first finger is doing the accompaniment. What, so this is one, two three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the um, the fourth and, I'm sorry, the thumb and the first finger are playing the what would be the accompaniment, like the chords. So it'd be one, one, three, one, right? Almost like, like I said, it almost feels like a reggae, boom. Once you get that down, then it's just a matter of like uh, start to separate those things. That's really fun when we start doing that. Okay, so let me write out the extra notes. So here's what we had. I uploaded this to the Discord. Uh, the Discord um, invite is right there. So if you want to join the Discord, the, the Everybody keeps talking afterwards, sharing pictures of themselves playing guitar or um, of uh, the, their guitars. Or in the case of Pepper, they share, share pics of giant or pictures, pics of pics, <laughs> pics of fat pics. Uh, that was kind of a skinny pic, too, that you picked. So it was a skinny pic of a fat pic. Um, okay, so I'm going to write, I'm going to write on this the B flat here. Because this note here, the third, the fourth string note is, uh, I'm sorry, the third string note is right there, that B flat. So I'm going to put that on top of the E. Okay, so we're going to have E and B flat. That's our chord. And it's going to be the same for all both of these bars of C. And then here, it's going to be the open G string. So you're going to get this. So you go from having like a tritone, which is, which I just learned. I mean, someone said it's called tritone because it takes three whole steps to get to it. One, two, three. I didn't know that. I just thought it was called a tritone. Um, and so for the C, C chord, we're playing a tritone, the, the E to B flat. And then for the on the G chord, we're playing a, a, a major second, which is kind of like, you know. It's kind of like that, that start of that, which is kind of dissonant. It's kind of the whole point of chopsticks. Oh, and, and Pepper, I don't think I'll get in trouble for playing, you know, one bar of um, uh, Every Breath You Take uh, from yesterday. I don't think they're that particular. It's um, It has to be a little bit longer than just like two or three seconds. Um, so the, the D, we're playing on the D string, we're playing an F and we have the open G string. And that's going to be our, uh, that's going to be our chord over the G chord. So... I appreciate you looking out for me. I, uh, yeah, and I, I just finally, I won that one. They had, there were two copyright infraction claims against uh, uh, the, that uh, bluegrass jam I did in, in D, which is just completely ridiculous. 
because I literally played it and re recorded it that day and then posted it the same day to claim that I, I am posting someone else's music from the 50s and 60s. And one of the songs was Santa Drives a Dually. Never heard of <laughs> that song. And it's like these bots just kind of hear some something in the music that's and it even the copyright claim said, I'm going to put a flat sign here. Just and so just so you know, if I put a flat sign um, on a note in a bar, that flat sign is good until the end of the bar. So if I want to be natural, I have to write a natural sign in front of it. Uh, but it's not going to cover the next bar. So this would go back to be natural from being B, B flat. So that's why I had to write a B flat here and a B flat there. So just a little bit of music theory there. Um, and then the G one's going to be interesting because I'm going to have to put the G there and the stem's going to go up. It's going to be, they're a little bit offset because they're on, they're taking up kind of the same real estate, the F and the G they're, you know, when you've got two notes that are played at the same time, uh, that are a whole step apart, you kind of have to stagger them. So there's what that looks like. So what I just played, this is what it looks like. Okay, take a good look at that. Memorize that right now. Come on, memorize it. You got it. Okay, you did it, right? You guys are all so smart. That's what I'm going to play right now. Dang, Reed. Sorry. So much life happening right here. <laughs> and you guys all take care of each other, which is really awesome. Hey, correct, Mark, how's it going? Let's see if anybody's seen any new. Oh, Mark, okay, Mark's there. Okay. And then we have, I don't know what Baby Shark is. Oh, baby shark to a uh, pick. I'm not going to make a pick out of a baby shark. Um, let's see. Okay. So that's what that is. I'm going to scan this and I'm going to post this now that I've added that. And then, um, here, yes. Okay. Scan. All right, so I'm scanning that one and I'm going to post that in the, again, like I said, I'm going to post that up in the Discord. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, like I said, you guys really kind of take care of each other. We'll have to uh, keep reading our prayers. Okay. Oh yeah. Water is. Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm drinking St. Arbucks. You'd think I had a, some kind of endorsement deal. I own stock in St. Arbucks. Now I did sell half. I may, I, I bought it. I bought St. Arbucks in 2000 or beginning of 2009 when everything crashed because uh, there were, I thought it was, I, I felt like it would be something that people would keep buying even though they were unemployed or whatever. And I was right. Um, because during, during the great depression, there were two, um, businesses that succeeded, uh, that did well during the great depression. One was the movie business. So everybody wanted to escape. They paid their nickel. My mom always said it, it was a nickel to see a movie. Um, and you know, you got something down when you can talk and play it at the same time. That's how you know you have it. And that's, you know what, I didn't think about this, but I should do tips for singing and playing at the same time. That could be one of the tips. If you could play. You know, if you can play the song you're going to be singing over and talk at the same time, you should be able to sing over. But, you know, with singing and playing, there's so many things going on. You've got, you've got to have the chords. you got to have the time. So you've got your chord harmony happening here your rhythm happening here, you've got to have the lyrics and you got to hit the melody. So your ear is working. Oh, I touched my ear, guys. We can take a sip. That does count as part of my face, we've determined. And I seriously need to get the hair around my ears trimmed. <laughs> it's like, man, I miss my barber. 
<laughs> so, anyway, uh, so, and then, you, you know, you've got to remember the lyrics and you've got to uh, be able to sing the melody and hit the melody notes. So there's a lot of stuff going on and it's why it is a big struggle. So I imagine being able to talk and sing or talk and play something at the same time is not a bad thing. Uh, would be a good transition maybe to it. Um, I've always said basically what you got to do is you got to get the song down guitar wise. You have to have it nailed guitar wise. And you also have to have the words and the melody memorized. You have to be able to sing it. So if you can do those two things apart, then it's just a matter about bringing those together. And I started singing and playing at the same time by doing harmonies. So a lot of times it was maybe I just had to sing on the chorus. Like if we were doing a chorus and we want a two part or three part harmony, I'd find my part um, and I would <clears throat> sing that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I would find it and I would eventually, it just took rehearsal. Like the band was rehearsing. I had to separately rehearse that thing, uh, playing and singing at the same time. The bass player in one of my bands, I wrote, I wrote all the songs in it and we were like doing police stuff and I would write the hardest bass lines and I would write the highest parts, you know, like, like, uh, like sting parts, uh, like, uh, like Roxanne. I mean, it was like, oh my, cause in the eighties, every band was trying to sound like the police, um, and so, okay, so now I've got this, uh, save as PDF. Uh, this is gonna be finger picking thing number 12. Um, and I didn't put fingerings on there, I can do that. I'm gonna draw a new one of these up to start doing the other notes. Um, and that's where it's gonna get a little bit more complex to look at, but, and to play, to be honest. Um, but okay, so I'm going back to the Discord, I'm gonna upload, yep. That's the pick, man. You have one of those? The, the jellyfish? Bonnie, do you have a jellyfish? Oh, look, it's missing some of the... In, in the jellyfish pick, um, I think it's just... It looks like D-strings, like electric guitar D -st wound D-strings. Uh, if you weren't here when I was talking about the jellyfish pick, it's this It's this funny pick that's... It was marketed as like making your six string sound like a 12 string because you, you were literally strumming the strings with strings. And so they, and I tried to make one of these. <laughs> it was like a complete failure. I should keep it just to remind me what a failure I am. Uh, but basically the idea is it kind of makes it. It doesn't really make it sound like a string, but it does have an interesting sound. Like I said. Particularly in single picking, I think it has a really interesting effect and I've used it on a lot of like movie scores. Um, I have a lot of composers that really like it when I come up with some new sound or new instrument. They really like that um, because they're always searching for that. So that's kind of one of my, actually, I don't want to call it trademark necessarily, but it's kind of a, a skill. Okay, so everybody, I'm getting a question here. Question from VP. Uh, VP, sorry, my feed wasn't, oh, question from Kathy. Oh my goodness, you guys are, Helping Kathy out. Uh, okay, Tom, I don't understand what you do with the fingers besides your thumb and index in that pattern. Uh, oh, uh, you mean on the right hand, Kathy? Sorry, let me make sure I can get your answer. Funny, you guys are all helping out, Kathy. <laughs> question from Kathy, question from Kathy, question from Kathy. Okay, my question in more detail. Okay, I understand what the thumb and index finger do with a pinch. What do the other fingers do? Well, we're not there yet. We're going to add those in, okay? But if, you know, if, if, um, uh, there we go. Sorry. Um, so eventually, what we're going to do is we're going to start those the 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 uh, middle and and ring finger are going to start showing up in these middle spots. Okay, we're going to start, and so it's really this C note and this E note. So you'll start to see C's and E's in here, and we'll place them in there. It may be random at first, but really, what we're doing is the, the, on the top two, top two strings with these two fingers, or even with just the ring finger, it's gonna be kind of playing the melody. Um, so like if I were... So anytime you hear ba and da, you're hearing the, the ring and the middle finger. I change the chord. So 
it's all a matter of, you know, start moving stuff around over here and start grabbing those notes over here with these two fingers. So that's what they're going to do eventually. But today we're only doing, we're only doing this. <laughs> okay. I know. I'm sorry. But when, if I like stop the feed, it, it just, it won't, you know, I got it. Yeah. Your, so your thumb is the bass. And then this finger is going to be kind of your chord with the thumb. And then the idea eventually. Uh, and that's what um, that's what's going to happen eventually. But I want to I'm trying to go really, really, really slow because I'm uh, I'm assuming the lowest. Um, the abilities at, at the you know lowest level, rather than try to go too fast. Um, the the more advanced players are either going to click onto a different video or they're going to try to find something that they're, they're, they're going to get. So I'm I'm trying to, you know, it's difficult. I'm trying to find stuff that I can share. Um, I think for the, some of the advanced players, that's kind of a fun chord. Also, another one. I love that chord, and that is that's also can work for a G chord. It's this, and I would call this G7, G13 with a sharp nine, believe it or not. So that's a very complex sounding name for a chord that's ultimately not that difficult to play. It's it's a lot like playing just a G chord. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can see my hand. Like playing a G chord like this, but moving your third finger and your fourth finger up two pairs of strings each, like that. And then don't play the A string. You could play, you could play that B there, but you already got a B, so it's just better to leave it dead. Otherwise, it gets too muddy. Sometimes I don't like playing the on a G chord. I don't like playing the fifth string because it just gets muddy. Now, interestingly, um, oh sorry, let me write this. I, I got the chord written here so you can see it. I just haven't hit send yet. That one, G7 over G. Uh, oh, in the G7. Uh, Oh, the G7, this one, um, I'm not using the D, I, I am using the D, I'm, hit, I, I'm playing an F on it, so the D is, has a, an F on it, so it'd be three, two, three, zero, zero, zero. That's the G7 over, you said G, but it's six, I knew what you meant. It's not G7 over, that's the, the, a little bit deceptive, having that slash, and um, having that slash and the, the six, Makes it sound like it's a G7 over the six. It's not a G7 over the six. It's a G7 with a six. You could also call it, you could also call probably in the old days we said, and I don't remember this, but you probably called it G7 add six. Um, you could also technically call G13 if you wanted that uh, this chord. But this one is G13 for sure, uh, because we do have a nine in it, which is the sharp nine. And so that'd be G13 sharp nine. Uh, the interesting thing though is if you did this one, I love that chord. Um, again, I'm playing three and then nothing on the fifth string. And then I'm playing open, three, three, open. And that's G minor six. What a beautiful chord that is. I love that chord. Now, if I'm playing that, like, that chord, like if I'm playing this one, Thanks, Rick. Thanks for joining us. That one would be, um, uh, I'm skipping the fifth string. So I'm, my bass is going back and forth between the fifth string and the, I mean, sorry, the sixth string and the fourth string. But that one's good. It's just things you come up with when you're trying to write something or playing, you know, you're kind of a lot of times if I'm in a, in a studio situation and we're just, it just says C chord and the style of music is this, then, then you try things and see if they work. And sometimes you just come up with cool things. So, yep. Um, yeah. And some now other that you know, some people would, instead of um, pinching like the C7, you could also, if you're, if you're a little bit more intermediate or advanced, 
Um, you could also, instead of doing a pinch there, you could do a hit the bass note and then hit like kind of slap the strings. Like it's a combination of things. I'm actually hitting the strings with my second and third finger nails like that. Okay. But I'm also hitting the bottom string uh, with my thumb, hitting it downward so that it mutes. I mean, not mutes it. So it makes a snare sound, right? And that's kind of a John Mayer trick, but I don't think he was the one that came up with it, but I, I heard it like, you know, I kind of stole it from him. Um, I think, um, uh, the song, the Bieber song that, that someone, he's not here now. He used to ask me every time, will you teach that one? And I still won't teach. Uh, but it's basically, you know, like, um, uh, I, was, I can't remember how I play it now. Something like, you know, like that. And that's kind of a form of, I got, I'll check Peter's question. Um, uh, that's kind of a form of uh, Travis pattern, which is what we're working on. In fact, I probably should say, Travis finger picking patterns in the title because um, that's what we're talking about now kind of transition. So um, Peter asks, are you muting a string with your middle finger uh, on my left hand or my right hand? Um, uh, so yes, sometimes like, yes, on this one. Yeah, when I put an X on a middle string, like if I write this chord out, the implication is there's two things. If you're going to strum that, you're going to have to mute. You're gonna have to mute. If you're picking it, you don't have to mute because you just won't hit that string. Does that make sense? So if, if there's so the X so that that symbol symbology <laughs> means third fret. Let's see, it's in order strings: bottom string and top string. Third fret X means nothing. Third fret, third fret, open, open, and we get this weird. Yeah, exactly. Same thing's true in the in the G minor six chord. I'm dead. I'm deadening that A string with the fifth, yeah, with the with the fleshy part of this finger, um, and that's one of those. Again, if I were picking it, I don't have to worry about it. I could just my pattern could just avoid that string. Isn't that beautiful chord it goes great to D. I know it's so hard, Peter, to see things through this screen because I know you got buffering. It's not as good a quality as what I'm seeing. So what I think is, oh, you can see that clearly. You can't sometimes. And if you were sitting next to me, you you just go, oh, what are you doing? You know, and so so hard. Now I got to try to read this while I'm trying to kind of keep this keep this moving forward. So there's some reason to stick around. I don't want people tuning out. I mean, I feel like uh, the um, the um, uh, I, I feel like the drinking game alone will keep people engaged. So, uh, but yeah, the, the G minor six could be kind of thought, thought of as a minor four chord of the key of D. The Beatles use that all the time, you know. Oops. What's uh, Layla, the song by Derek and the Dominoes is, kind of, is like that. I could, you can play on piano, it's like one. So basically, like, the way you might play that would be D, D over F sharp, grab that F sharp there. You can grab it this way. The way I'm fingering this D over F sharp is technically D2 over F sharp, because I got the E string ringing now. Is just a plain old G chord? And it does it again, of course. It's not the key, I don't think. I don't think the original key is this. Uh, dun, 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 dun. And what I did there was third string, second string, open E string, get that F sharp, which is beautiful over that minor, that G minor chord. Isn't that nice? It's a great progression. Yeah, it's one of my favorite progressions. I mean, it's kind of like the Radiohead, you know, the what, what's the Radiohead G? 
it goes to a B from G to B, but it's not a B G over B. It's B7. And then it goes to the four chord major. And then it makes the four chord minor. Because I'm a creep. It's creep is that. Right? Yeah, I love that kind of thing. Um, I, I scratch my head. It doesn't count as um, touching my face. But I will for your benefit. change guitar so you can take a sip from reed tom are you using the low or high e string for the f sharp a deal sharp? yes i'm using the high e string i mean you can grab it you know you if you don't want the pretty much in any key that any key that d will the d major chord is in e is going to work and i really like having open strings but you could totally you can totally you know use your thumb on that deal ref sharp and keep the d chord intact or the other thing you can do is you could also finger it like this that just seems like a lot of work <laughs> guitar players are not generally prone to doing too much work yep another sip oh i can't oh i changed guitars again didn't i wow Verdi is going to be on the floor in about another five minutes. <laughs> I love how we think the worst of Verdi. <laughs> Poor Verdi. <laughs> See, he's and those are those are big beer steins. Those are like those are almost German beer steins, Verdi. And there's two of them. They're clicking together, but somehow I just picture you holding two steins, clicking them together. <laughs> that's not two people. That's one person right there. <laughs> Yeah. Already on the floor. Hilarious. Uh, yeah. I can I can block that, Kathy. I got it. Oh, okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, trolls. There's this 14-year-old kids that are trolling this. You know that, right? They're like 14-year-old boys. They think they're funny. That was the thing about the Bieber stuff. Was it, you know, Justin actually like, brags that Baby is the most un disliked video on YouTube in the history of YouTube. He actually brags about that. And, um, it, you know, the dislikes, whatever they're, you know, you know, they were, they were jealous about a 15 year old boy that all the, all the junior high girls in their school were all in love with. And so they hated him for that alone. I mean, it wasn't like they even listened to his music. But uh, uh, the funny thing was, was that, the girls would make some comment and then the trolls just show up and just tear them apart. So they're not trolls. Don't necessarily hate uh, like they don't hate the artist. They hate anybody that's a fan girl or a fan boy of an artist. Anybody who's fan is short for fanatical. Right. So trolls typically just have a thing against fanatics. <laughs> so that's what they're trolling. But anytime like, Anytime someone trolls the artist and then the artist goes, hey, you know, that's probably not the best thing to say or, oh, well, I'm sorry you didn't like the song or whatever. The troll is like, oh, my gosh, no, I really do like the song. <laughs> they totally change the tune because they have a real interaction with a real human. And that's pretty funny. So um, let's see. Yeah, that my that little <laughs> that little ukulele, you know, they took it away from its mother too soon. That's why. Um, I changed the pick, Verdi. <laughs> Verdi's looking for excuses. Um, let's see. Yeah, exactly. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Uh, yes. I have Prince Albert in a can. Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's okay. Just, just pull back a little bit on the alcohol there. I don't know how to say your name. It's Japanese. It looks like a cross and a fish, though. 
So it kind of looks like a cross and an ichthus, whatever that is. Uh, I'm sorry you're drunk too. <laughs> Oh, who was a troll? Oh, just someone here that was, that you missed it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Kathy took care of it. We've had a couple today, or more than a couple. Okay. I don't know. I can always go back and look at what they said later, <laughs> but I don't bother. Uh, let's see. New rule, changing pick. No, no, that's Verdi's rule. That doesn't count. Because, I, uh, yeah. Plus, it's kind of a small thing to, to base a rule on that you really can't tell if I've changed picks. So, um, and that's another thing. With picks, if you're having trouble, like if you're not, uh, you don't normally use picks, which is perfectly natural for you to be, be watching this series because it's on finger picking. Um, I'm going to keep playing this pattern. In fact, I need to work on it right here, this part. Um, then carry the pick around with you. If you're, if you're constantly dropping picks, sorry, I'm not doing an even number here. Really, is that true, AJ? Um, but I'm actually holding my pick right now. And it's always good to have a pick in your hand, but some people have a problem with dropping picks. So what I tell them is just go ahead and carry a pick around you all day long. You know, have it in your hand while you drink your coffee or when you're having dinner or you're typing even, you can type with it in your hand. You just get so good at having it in your hand, you never drop it anymore. Um, so that's um, that's kind of why. And I love the look of these picks, this, particularly these uh, in, in the night with a at church with a blue light on. It looks really, really, they like glow in the dark. It's really cool. So if I ever drop the pick, in the middle of a song, which doesn't happen very often, but if I do, I can see it. It's glowing on the floor. It looks kind of cool. You can also practice this on a C chord. Lifting off your second finger and hammer it, hammer it in on. So hit, hit hammering it on, hammering. It's hard to say. Um, hit the open D string and then hammer it. You can be a little sloppy if you want. You could hit the fifth string and the and the D. You hit that, those two strings, the fifth and the fourth. It would sound like that. And if you hit the fourth and the third, it would sound like this. You can do the same thing on a G chord. You can do it on a little F chord too. Yeah, you know, you know, whatever chord you're playing, you can always experiment with any. You know, just just try things, and you never know what's going to work. If it works, you can save it for later. Uh, what is Bonnie doing that is being thanked? Are cracking me up. Good exfoliant. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else can we talk about. Well, um, let me go. Let's see. All right, let's do this. Let's just stay on the C chord. I may have to write this out again, but let's just stay on the C7 chord, okay? So we're not going to go to the G chord. And we're working on this. And the beat is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So our bass player is playing on one and three. Two, four, two, four. We got a license request. Hold on a second. Let me check out and see what this is. It'd be cool if 
I would love it if um, uh, do publisher. <laughs> I'm still my. I'm starting to get a publishing deal right now. I mean, not a deal. I just want to get an admin. Right now, digital turn. Oh, I was hoping it was some kind of license for a commercial or something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Totally fine. I have to. I have to print and sign something though, and then scan it and send it. Um, uh, typical kind of thing. But I like it when they use. Yeah, I get these licenses for songs that I've written and they, you know, they want to use them for a commercial or a movie or something like that. That's always great because I have to pay you for that. Plus you get money on the back end. Okay, so what I want to do with this. I'm separating. So what I'm doing is I'm going thumb and then thumb and index and then thumb and then index. The thumb is doing the same thing, but then the index is, is going to index is going to pluck sooner. So we're not going to have to pinch now. We're going to actually play the index then the thumb. So look at this. Okay, do that. Thumb on the fifth string and then thumb and fourth. A thumb on the fourth and first on the third, like that. And then go down. Move your third finger down here to the on the G note. Hit that bottom string. And then pluck the first finger on the third string and then answer with the fourth string like that. In slow motion, it's like, it's like this. Uh, that's my imitation of slow motion. I don't know why my mouth is always opening in slow motion. Like I'm jumping off a building or something like that. So now the rhythm is one, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. So the, the thumb is still playing on beat four. So thumb is playing on all four beats. One, two, three, four. The only thing is the first finger was playing one, two, three and four. One, two, three. But to explain it that way, that's almost more complex. It's almost easier just to kind of stumble on it to be true. Questions I have to catch up on. Yeah, and that'll come in real handy, Frank, if you got it. Frankie. I'll go slower, sorry. Okay, and then to the for the G chord it was something. Now we're gonna, we can talk about swing, swinging. Okay, so straight eighth notes sound like this. One, two, three, four. Like a machine. Bum, 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 bum. Swung eighth notes. I always imagine, and I, this, this is only because I'm kind of come from the jazz background, the, the drummer playing the ride cymbal going you know getting that it's not ding 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 like a like a, a railroad crossing it's ding 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 that's swinging um so straight it would sound like this check it out and there's varying degrees of swing his swing hear that bit So you could try, if you're more advanced, you can try to do that. Okay. So, okay. So uh, I'm glad, Frankie, you got it. Let's see. Someone at the door? My door? <laughs> I, uh, two and four. Okay. So let me, um, I'm going to have to print up. So I'm going to have to write this out again. We're not, I'm not going to write out the G. I'll just do the C. So you can see notation-wise what it looks like. But it, this is where it might get a little bit more confusing. Okay. 
because I'm going to have to do some ties. We talked about ties. Somebody said, hey, how do you do ties? You know, what does that mean? What's a tie? And so I explained it. Well, now you're going to see it. I think this is the first time we've actually will have had a tie in music in anything we've done in any of our uh, live streams here. Um, yeah, here somewhere. Oh, I. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Here it is. Okay. Everybody doing well? Sorry, Reed, about your situation. That's just got to be the worst. I can't imagine. I just got to break. I mean, it's so bad on so many levels. I mean, it's one thing if it's a girlfriend, but a wife, uh, it's a whole nother thing. A spouse, totally, you know. So I don't know if Reed's still there, but hey, Ben, let's see. Perfect example about the ride. Symbol. Yeah, that's kind of what, you know, or, you know, you can hear drummers play the high. That whole, that's, that's a swing feel. And on, when I'm programming like drums or whatever, I can do swing, but it's like, you can go 50% to 75%. 50% would be straight um, eighth note and 75% would be a, a basically a triplet. Um, and so you can go anywhere in between. Every drummer is going to have a different swing. So if you're doing a bunch of tracks, uh, say you're doing a bunch of tracks for for a you know, TV show or something like that. Not that you would be doing that, but that's what I do all day. <laughs> so um, if I'm doing a series of songs that are like swing, you know, like bluesy or swingy or whatever, um, then um, I will often change the, uh, uh, bye Ben. Um, I will often change the the swing percentage depend, you know, per track. So one track might be 67% and the other one might be 68 and another one might be 66. That way there's a slight variation on the swing. It doesn't sound like uh, the same, same player on every track. Now, oh, here we go. Okay. So get my pen out. So I'm going to write out um, that pattern. So we're going to start out with the same thing. I'm going to write out the C chord here with the G, um, let's see, C, E, uh, C, E, B flat, C, and then E. Okay, that's our C7 chord. And then um, we're going to do bass. One, two, three is the G, four is the E, and then again, C, E, G, E. And I'm putting stems down on this. This is your thumb. And that's a great thing about music notation too. It's like, okay, those are all your thumb notes. So that's the boom, dun, boom, dun, right? And then uh, we did before, we played that B flat here. And we did it here on beat three. Boom, pinch, boom, pinch. We Before we did that, boom, pinch, boom, okay? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Little, a very small handgun. Boom, pew, boom, pew. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Kathy, I'm tired. This is 38 days. I'm, I'm literally going, I'm getting slap happy or hap slappy, I like to say. <laughs> I say hap slappy because it implies that it's like you're saying it twice. You're saying that you're hap slappy and you're proving that you're hap slappy. <laughs> Boom pew. Yeah. Like when when Chandler tries to do the crack the whip sound. <laughs> Kathy's gonna die right now. Like, whoopa. And Joey's like, what? What's whoopa? <laughs> okay, so now what's gonna happen is instead of the the uh whoopa, <laughs> yeah. It is it is slap happy, Dennis. But I'm making a, I'm doing what's called a spoonerism, and that's reversing the first letters of the first word with the first letters of the second word. Whoopa! Yeah, whoopa! I need a day off. No, I won't. I'm not for you. I'm not for you guys. I'm not taking a day off. I refuse, unless I'm sick. Um, so, a bondulance. <laughs> I'm having a stroke, a strong, a bondulence. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I'm. What we're gonna do is that, that normally that third string note would be here, but we're gonna play it early, so that creates a notation problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a quarter note rest. Oops, oh, dang it. There. Okay, that thing that looks like a three there that I totally jacked up. That's a quarter note rest. It means we're not playing nothing on the top 
but here's our bass note, okay? And again, imagine if this were piano music, you would have a bass clef and a treble clef, and these notes would be written down here on this staff, and th then you would have, on the top staff, you would have a rest. So that rest is not before or after this, it's at the same time as this bass note. Again, this will get a little bit more, you know, complex reading. It still will look like what you're, it still will look more like what you're playing than tablature ever could. Okay, so boom, da, boom, da, boom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this B flat to another B flat. And again, this is like I said, this is, there's no quiz on this. But this is the way I get that that other B flat. Oh, wait, I got to put in the stem here. So if we add this up, let me close this for now. If we add this up, and this the second bar is going to be the same as this bar, but um, if we add this up, that's a quarter rest, that's a quarter note, that's two eighth notes, that equals a quarter note, and that is an, there's another quarter note. So there's four beats right there. Here's four quarter notes, so we have four beats right there. There's what we need in a bar, because this is four, four bar. Four, four means four quarter notes. That's why it's written as a fraction, four over four, four quarter notes. So here's four quarter notes in the bass, and here's four quarter notes. And again, notice that I, I tied these together. That way, um, you can see this beat right here. You see beat one, beat two, beat three is those two notes, and beat four. So two eighth notes equals one quarter. Okay, so now that I've over-explained everything. <laughs> so what we have here is basically one, two, three and four is the rhythm that's happening. So the one is the bass note. The two is the, is the, is the bass, the thumb coming up to the fourth string. Same pattern for caged. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that must be someone else. I should do quizzes. Yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I really, 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 really don't think that Pepper would go for quizzes right now. <laughs> that's just my thought. <laughs> she sends me messages, it's like, yeah, I got three quizzes coming up today, and I got seven tomorrow, and I got 422 on Friday. And anyway, look, a squirrel closer to the camera. Okay. Sorry, Hook. So, what's happening here is there's beat one, two, three. There's the and and four. Boom, dun, boom, bum, bum, boom, bum, boom, boom, boom. Now, it's written as a straight eighth note. Okay. <laughs> she cried. <laughs> Sorry, hell no. Yeah, exactly. Oops, got to be careful there, Pepper. Kathy, delete that comment. Delete that comment. <laughs> it's going to be gone in a second. Yeah, it's gone, Pepper. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to write out uh, the next bar, and it'll be a little bit better looking because I don't, I didn't screw up the. I put an eighth note rest initially, like an idiot. So, um, okay. All right, tie, tie, and then again, one, two, three, and four. So if you get down the thing we did earlier, um, which was if you have that down, and you can do, you can apply this if you if you got that, you know, if you get this down, you can apply it. Okay, here's the thing we did earlier. Boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, boom, da. Bass chord, bass chord, bass chord, bass chord all the way through here, okay? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I, yeah, I won't be surprised. You probably won't be able to go outdoors until you actually pass the quiz. <laughs> like, oh no, <laughs> it'll be a revolt. <laughs> Everybody will just, yeah, forget it, I'm going outside. And so you, I can put these two on top of each other. You can kind of see uh, like this, maybe. See the, the, the uh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm, I like, I, you know, if it didn't require so much pre-work, I would do all this in advance. And then I, I'm going to get the OBS thing happening so that I can maybe put a, right here, right here. <laughs> it's hard to get my hand in the right spot. Right there. My nails are fairly clean. Um, you know, so that I can have that on the screen while I do this. But right now I can't figure out how to make it be in the corner of the screen. I can only figure out how to make it me and then or this kind of thing. So you'd prefer this, I know. But. Uh, so I, I'm trying to figure out how I actually can have two things on the screen at once. Uh, I know it can be done. I see you guys do it all the time. Uh, so I'm going to get there, but it's just going to be a matter of time. And of course, I'll probably figure it all out right before, right as the whole lockdown is ending. And I'm seeing my numbers a little bit lower. Some people are starting to get back to work. So 
Um, okay. So you can kind of see how the beats go by here. And then you can see how this is, all I did was I moved this quarter note, uh, an eighth note earlier and had to go through all these machinations just to do that. So that's where music notation could be a little bit more of a pain. If it were tab, you would just move the number over, okay? Uh, so music notation could be a little bit more and it starts looking more complicated, but again, it sounds like it looks if you if you do it. So, um, and here's that. So here's what it was before the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now it's separating. And I'm swinging. Now I'm not. Three and four, like a robot. Three and four, one, two, three and four, one, two, three and four, one. But if I swing it, two. That's too swung. That's too swung. But that's what we're going for. That's just fun right there. books on the Travis pattern. Um, I, I can post a couple up. I have one that I bought. It was actually really, really good, but it wasn't, it kind of dug in pretty quick, but um, it did talk about it. Let me see if I can find it um, on Amazon and I'll put a link. I can put a link even here if you want to order it. And I do see that you guys order stuff on my Amazon links and thank you for doing that. You know, just so you know, I get like as much as 5%. So if you spend a hundred dollars, I make as much as five bucks of that sale um so let's see travis picking pattern or travis picking yeah there's a lot of here's guitarist guy i'm trying to let me see if i can find the one that i got uh boy there are a million of them holy cow i'm really not i i well i mean you basically on a lot of these you go with the ones that have the most reviews like one that has one five-star review is pointless because that's the author or the author's mom. <laughs> um, here's one that's a Hal Leonard one. It's got 200 reviews. Oh, it's a Kindle only though. Oh, it's got four books though, three books. Well, if you're a Kindle user, you might be able to click on, see, I can create, oops, no, that's not what I want. Create, I can create a text link that I, that, I don't know how this little teeny tiny link gets you to the product and gives me I mean, I guess the, the the math of having one number, two numbers, and five letters. Um, the art of Travis picking, picking. Yeah, is that the one I just happened to snag? No, this is a method. Okay, let me look up the art of Travis picking. Um, no. Let me see if I can find it. The... The Art of Contemporary Travis Picking. It's got 15 reviews. Country style. You know, I want one that's going to have, you know, the, the Hal Leonard one is probably going to be pretty academic. Um, and there probably is one done by somebody who's like in a master player, but they're not the, usually the best teachers. Case in point. I'm not good at anything. Uh, yeah, this is it Mark? Am I seeing Mark? Oh, no, this is two different Marks. Yeah, so I'm not sure. But this one's got 44 reviews, 4.5. A guitarist guide to Travis to finger picking techniques and patterns. It may have more than Travis. I mean, there's I have a hard time believing you could have three books on Travis pattern, but you know, when you really start digging into it, and then also, you know, you're not just talking about um you're not just talking about um oh, so Peter, if you're if you go to any of my YouTube videos in the description, there are a bunch of links. Like I put, oh, here's the picks I use. Here's the Elixir strings. Click on any of those links. You don't have to buy that thing. You just continue your shopping at that point. Once you've clicked through, like if you click through any of these links, these two links right here, and you don't have to buy those books. You just continue shopping. I don't need this on stave the battery or the, oh, still fully battery. That's cool. It's generating a little heat. It's not very hot though. It's cool. If you're tuning in just now, you're like, what the heck? 
is going on. So anyway, as I was saying, man, I got the worst migraine. <laughs> My eyes, Reed, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lawsuits. It's like, like the doorbell rings. I'm being served <laughs> like within a minute. Um, yeah. So if you, like I said, so Peter, that you can just do that, you know, any, any purchase you make after, um, and sometimes, you know, I, I've made as much as a hundred bucks in a month. One time I made $300 because somebody years ago, and then when I first started doing this, like in the nineties, somebody went through and bought an entire PA system through Amazon for their church. And they spent like, I don't know what, $300 is like 5% of what? Let's see. Like, uh, so 10%, that would be. So it was like six grand or something. They didn't buy an entire PA system, but they spent about six or seven grand. And I got a check from Amazon for $300. So, you know, I'll take it. Um, yeah. So it, it applies to anything you purchase at that point. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy's, Kathy's got her phone calculator out. Where is my phone? Well, that's weird. Oh, it's over there. That's good. I don't need my phone. Let's see if I'm getting text. Oh, not getting text. I'm so sad. All right. Okay. So what else do we have? Um, any other questions, Kathy? I don't see anything here. I'm so glad, though, that you guys kind of watch out for each other. Kathy watches out for all of you. And then you watch. You all watch out for Kathy. So it kind of works out. Kathy's like a mother hen. She's like taking care of everybody. Story time. Oh my goodness. What am I going to tell a story on? Give me a, give me a random subject and see if I have a story on it. Cause I'm trying to think I'm running. I'm, oh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> Cause I'm thirsty. I should start a band in high school called story time. Watermelon. I don't really like watermelon, uh, but that was a good random word. Diane, come here. <laughs> Hurry, Diane, Diane, come back. <sighs> That's funny. Um, sip, sip. Ever broke a guitar string? Honestly, a hundred times. Um, I When I first started using elixirs, <laughs> I almost was going to stop because I, I kept breaking the G string. The guitar G string. Come on, get your minds out of the gutter, people. <laughs> You're like, you broke a G string. That must have been painful. <laughs> yeah, especially during worship. <laughs> pizza um uh, so uh i uh yeah so the the um so i i broke a lot of g-strings a lot of d-strings and, and elixirs initially they were they had some kind of manufacturing issue and they were sending me free sets so what i would do was i would just they had me send them the broken strings and then they would analyze them um and so uh so that um oh which darren did i prefer on bewitched the second one Definitely the second one, Darren number two. Um, so that ab that kind of answers that question. Yeah, I, I break e, high E strings a lot live, especially if the strings are getting old and I just not paying attention. I need to change strings more often than I do. I usually just wait till I break the string. I always have a backup guitar when I'm playing live, um, except when I'm traveling. When I'm flying, I just um, bring one string, but I change strings right before I leave. So. Um, and then, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't mind watermelon. I don't mind the flavor, but it's just a lot of work. You got to spit out seeds and I'm just pair. I don't like having seeds, you know, just too much work. Uh, you bought it. What did you buy? <laughs> that made me, you bought that Travis book. Yeah. Why not? What the heck? I don't know. I'm, there, there's no endorsement for me. Those were just ones I've seen there where they have good reviews. Eleven fifty for a paperback. That's not bad. Um, so the um, uh, so uh, I do have a so I do have a, somebody said something that made me think of a story. I actually told this story on uh, on my um, on my um, my playlist. This playlist, the one that's uh, the. Be, uh, for anyone who's interested in doing the, being in the music business, um, I recommend. Let's go. There we go. I recommend uh, the, that you check out this playlist, and it's kind of. I feel like what I, my my one of my 
gifts is, and certainly not discernment, but uh, one of my gifts is kind of being able to tell people things that they need to hear. Um, and so uh, that's kind of what I, when I started that playlist on uh, the, the business of making music, the very first video on that, and they're in, I think they're in order on the playlist. Let me make sure. Yeah, they're, they're numbered too, so you can go through number wise. It's not necessary, but um, there are basically 18, and then there's like th two others, three others that I put in that. Yeah, I don't know why that one's in there, the business of making music. Uh, but anyway, the first one is something to think about. The second one's get in the game. Uh, third one is being in the right place. Third one is living below your means, which is really actually one of the most important ones. If you want to try to get into the arts of any kind or any profession where there's no guarantee, one of the keys is to keep your living wage down so that you're, I'm not your living wage down, keep your, your the, what you need to earn down. Don't go getting fancy cars and expensive apartments, you know, really try to keep your living costs down so you can stay in the game because that's pretty much well, it's a given if you quit, you're going to fail. And so what happens is you you find people all around you that have, try, you know, that have basically run out of money. They just can't afford to keep trying. Um, so, hey, oh, Darth, how's it going, man? Uh, so we're actually done with the lesson. So, uh, somebody, who was it, uh, posted a lesson time. I forget who it was. Thank you for doing that. When the lesson started at 22 minutes, I think, or 21 minutes in. I'm like, so I'm going to pin those. Anyone who kind of catches that, I'll pin it. Um, another one here, should I go to music school, be or come to college? So these, this is the playlist for those. Okay. Um, and so one of them I talk about, let's see, I know I did one on guard your brand. Um, oh yeah. I think it was after that one. Don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> okay. So I think I told this story in this video about don't believe everything you hear. Um, So back before the internet, back before Craigslist, um, there was a magazine called, let's see, in Indiana, it was called The Recycler. Here it was called, I don't know, maybe it was called The Recycler here. I can't, I think, anyway, it was a magazine and you would, you know, people would buy and sell cars in it. Um, guitars were really, you know, musical instruments were really common. You know, the, the Recycler, the the, mag, the the newspaper you would buy that if you were going to be buying, you know, if you're gonna, like today, you would just go to Craigslist. It's basically the same thing as Craigslist. What was that? What was that called? Everybody had different local names for it. Um, exactly. <laughs> That's the whole Tom broadcast. Thank you, Peter. I doubt that. But um, so there was also a huge section of guitar players looking for bands, bass players looking for bands, drummers looking for bands, and then bands looking for guitar players and bands looking for bass players. You know, you wish you could just like shuffle that deck up and just go, okay, I'll, I'll go off now. You don't need to advertise anymore. Uh, but you would scroll through that and you know, your course, one the ones that say paid rehearsals or upcoming gigs, you know, those would be the ones that like, okay, maybe I'll do that one. But you really, it was just, it was like every one of these things was like a blind date. You would go to the audition of the rehearsal. I remember I went to one audition. This is a separate story, Diane. Uh, um, and this this band, this guy, his big claim to fame was he, he did a battle of the bands where he won and John Bon Jovi finished Bon Jovi finished second in this battle of the bands. And that was his big claim to fame. And uh, I got, I show up and it was a four piece band. And um, I don't remember, you know, there would be no way of getting the MP3s in advance. There were no MP3s. There were no e emails or texts or anything like that. So probably just showed up and learned the song there. Uh, they were good musicians. And the funny thing was I'm five eleven, and they were all six, three, six, four, six, five. So they were towering over me. And um, I learned a song, like two songs. We rehearse. They like my sound. They like my attitude, my playing. They like the fact that I learned the songs really fast. And this is not the story I was going to tell, but this is a different story. I'll tell both. Um, and um, and they go, congratulations, Tom, you got the gig. And I'm like, all right, cool. This is awesome. You know, and they had some gigs coming up kind of thing. And they, you know, like I said, their big claim to fame was that they finished first in a in a, in a contest where John Bon jo or Bon Jovi finished second. So and, uh, this guy kind of comes in the back and they had a sound man. They were in a big rehearsal studio. So they rented, they had a space that they, you know, which is, that makes it more legit. If it's not someone's garage or someone's basement, it's actually a, a rehearsal studio with a sound man. You know, it's more legit, legit. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm standing there and this guy walks in the back 
And he comes up, hi, I'm Jim. And I'm like, oh, hey, Jim, nice to meet you. And, and they go, and every, you know, and everybody knew Jim. It was like, I was the only one that didn't know him. And, and so they're going, yeah, Jim's our choreographer. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I started packing up and I just left. <laughs> and that guy called me like 10 years later to sub for him in a Beatle band. He plays George in a Beatle band. And it paid, it was for New Year's Eve and he couldn't do the gig and it paid like $800. That was what the gig paid, which is a, this was years, it's like 15 years ago. It was a real, that's a really good paying gig for 15 years ago. But I had to learn George's guitar parts and George's vocal parts. And I had to sing and kind of sound like George. And I'm just like, when I ran the numbers, I figured I'm going to spend at least 40 hours on this. So that ends up being what, how much an hour? So $2, $20 an hour. If I spent 40, I would probably gonna spend more like 80 hours on it. So it probably doesn't wasn't really worth my time. Um, uh, Bonnie's computer froze, rebooting. Dang, Jim, well, why aren't you watching on the same computer? Because <laughs> they're married. I'm give. Oh, who's talking about chocolate? Okay, anyway. Uh, so then, uh, the other story, the other band thing. So so anyway, this this. Um, Ad, I answer this ad, I go to the rehearsal, and there's a it's just me and the guy. And the guy the, he said, Oh, yeah, the other band, the drummer and the bass player didn't show up. I'm like, okay, or they canceled or something. I'm like, well, okay, whatever. And it was, I guess, a paid rehearsal. I think it paid like $20 or something, like gas money. And so I remember it was at Amp Studios, it's still there in on Lancashire in in North Hollywood. And and I'm so we're rehearsing at the studio. I even remember the room. I mean, this is this is 35 years ago. And we rehearse, and uh, we're, I'm learning his songs, and they're not very good songs. And he's a singer. He's kind of a big, rotund guy. Kind of reminded me a little bit like, uh, uh, who's the SNL comedian that passed away? The, you know, oh, you'll be living in a van bound by the river, that guy. <laughs> Everybody's going to answer. Um, yeah, Tom and Stereo, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and he kind of looked like that guy, you know, uh, just kind of a big, you know, and he wasn't a very good singer and the songs weren't very good. And I'm like, going, ah, yeah, but it paid $20. So then like, okay, I'll see you next time. And he goes, okay, we'll schedule. I'll call you and schedule a rehearsal next week. All right. Sure. What the heck? It's Chris Farley. Exactly. Thank you, Kathy. And uh, he kind of looked like Chris Farley. And so then he calls me and he says, Hey, um, do you know any drummers and bass players? And I'm like, um, sure. I said, uh, so what, you know, what's, uh, does, is it going to pay anything? I'm like, kind of getting like, I didn't think his music. Oh, and this is the other thing. Okay. This was the premise of the video. The guy said, he's got a gig booked at, uh, at the Rose Bowl, <laughs> which seats a hundred thousand people. Like we're playing the Rose Bowl. I'm like, and I believed him. I'm from Indiana. Why would someone lie about that? Why would you lie about playing at, at the Rose Bowl? In Indiana, no one lies about, hey, you know, I've got a gig at the, at the, you know, at the county fair. You know, you, you wouldn't lie about that. But in Hollywood, everybody lies. But I didn't know that. I'm like, oh, wow. So I'm, I'm telling my mom, hey, I'm going to be playing the Rose Bowl. You know? <laughs> and, and like the Super Bowl was just at the Rose Bowl that year or something. So I'm like, and I'm in Pasadena, so I know what the Rose Bowl is. And so, I, but, you know, I'm just as like fresh off the turnip truck, you know, kid from Indiana in Hollywood. And he says, yeah. And so I'm good. We're, we're going to rehearse at this place in Santa Monica instead of North Hollywood. Well, Santa Monica is like a lot further from Pasadena than North Hollywood. And my buddies are going to have to drive out there too. And they're not, they're coming from more my neighborhood. So I'm like, okay. So I, I bring in my, my band, basically my bass player and my, the drummer in my band, the three of us show up there. And he's always oh, he says, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't afford to pay you this week, but I'll feed you guys. Eat you guys, okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, oh, shoot. I'd already you know, like said yes, and so we we drive out there, and it's the the rehearsal is like at a church where he's a janitor, and he's got keys to this place, and so we're in the gym. You know, you know what gyms sound like, right? The gym in this you know has a stage, so we're set up on the, actually not even set up on the stage. We set on the floor of the gym. And he got our guitars and, you know, my friend Scott and Kirk brings the bass. Kirk, that was the band that I wrote all the high parts for the bass player and made him play all these difficult things. And we set up and, and we practice and he's teaching us these songs. And it's like, we're looking at each other like, these are awful songs. 
And he goes, oh, yeah, I got food for you guys after about like two hours of like sweating, you know, playing these songs. And um, we uh, <clears throat> we uh, yeah, I was totally gullible. Oh, my gosh. So gullible. And so he brings out the food. The food was <laughs> a bottle, a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola and a, a bag of Oreos. That was the food. So we're not getting paid. We drive like 40 minutes to Santa Monica one way in traffic. And that was back in the 80s. So that was 40 minutes. Now it's like 400 minutes. Um, and uh, it's just like, are you kidding me? Um, and so I never, of course, he, I think he called again. And, and so I've told this, you know, and he really wanted to be like Van Morrison. So his name was Van Jameson. And I think I found him. <laughs> I think I found him on LinkedIn, like 30 years later, 34, 34 years later. Yeah, no, no milk. No, yeah. Are you kidding? Warm, you know, room temperature, Coca-Cola. And and my kids, when when they they tell the story because they think it's so funny, they tell the story and um they always say that, that the Coke, the, the two liter bottle was open, which makes it much worse because it could be completely dead Coca-Cola. And then you know, they say that the, the, um, uh, um, uh, that the, uh, the bag of Oreos was also open. So it's like, Oh my gosh, it was like, sheesh. Oh yeah. I'd be mad, but I was mad, but you know, I was just this kid. I'm like, well, you know what? Hey, we'll be playing at the Rose bowl. I was just like, Kirk, Kirk and Scott didn't fall for it, but they, they, you know, we, the, you know, that was the last time we never, never rehearsed with them again or did anything with them again, of course. But uh, I think I literally found the guy though on it because I was telling the story and the kids just think it's the funniest story. And, uh, you know, so uh, I have another story. Diane, you want to remind me about a story tomorrow in case I'm, if I'm hurting for a story, remind me to tell, um, the story about the eye patch. Okay. My wife loves this story. My mom was just, she apologizes every time I, I every time I would recount this story, she would apologize and my wife would just laugh. <laughs> so you've got a responsibility, Diane, to remember the eye patch story. That should help me remember what I'm going to tell you. But I, I, I think we got enough story today. It's getting hot in here. I'm sweating. I gotta get I gotta get my doors open because I got my doors closed to to, uh, to to keep the noise out if there's any noise. So eye patch story. Yep. Is there an eye patch emoji? Anybody have an eye patch? Yeah, pirates. Arg. You see the latest pirate movie? It's rated R. <laughs> or or look up <laughs> look up pirate pickup lines. That's pretty funny. Isn't there an international pirate day or something? Look up pirate pickup that lines like prepare to be boarded. <laughs> uh, okay, David, in 1983, I did a comedy show where the guy whose name you'd all know ended up on US TV. Years later, he never paid me, went off to Portugal on holiday with the money. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't think there's a video out there, but I had a friend. I can't imagine. Back when I first moved here, I had a friend that brought me to a cable like American bandstand, like local cable American bandstand. And I'm an awful dancer. And so we go to this thing because they were look, they needed dancers for this American bandstand show. Oh, air quotes. That's one of the drinking game rules. If I, I used air quotes. So um no eye patch emoji. Oh all right. <laughs> Dennis has been in a mood. Uh, yeah, I got to have milk with Oreos. Yeah. I like double stuffed Oreos. Although my favorite is Little Debbie, uh, the, the uh, Little Debbie uh, oatmeal cream pie things. Those are really good. Um, I can't really drink. I can't eat chocolate after like four o'clock in the afternoon or I'll, it'll keep me up. Too much caffeine. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, I, you know what's uh, my? I told I've told you about Judith Hill, who's uh, a great singer, whose parents play. Oh, this counts. 
Sip. Um, she was um, rehearsing. Uh, she was the singer with Michael Jackson when he died. Um, I actually have a couple friends, several friends in that band. Uh, Alex Al, who's a great bass player. Uh, Michael Bearden was the super uh, the the um, the uh, music director and the keyboard player. And I think Sugarfoot was the drummer. I think he did all of Michael Jackson's tours pretty much. But um, and I've worked with Sugarfoot. I know Sugarfoot. Um, but she she did you know they did the rehearsals and they were doing rehearsals at Staples Center and then he dies and then they make a video a movie out of the rehearsals and they didn't pay him anything um, I think Alex may have taken him to court but they all signed documents saying that anything you know and you always do this whenever you do any kind of thing and they've got cameras even our church does it they make you sign documents because right now our church is using previously recorded rehearsal or uh, worship services for worship. Um, so we're not getting paid for those, but we've signed documents saying we have no claim against that. They could if they wanted to, but they've chosen not to. Oh, Bonnie's taking off. Bye, Bonnie. Um, yeah, double stuff is definitely the bomb, but definitely double stuff is better than just the plain old ones. My wife gets these really super thin ones, and I'm like, I think she's buying them for me, but I, I, I was like, ah, I like the cream more than I like the, the chocolate. So, um, all right. <laughs> okay, David, you're running out of... Fluids. I got my backup. My backup is the water here. Um, but yeah, so I don't think they, they may have gotten a little bit of money, but of course they, they released that movie. This is it. This is it in the theaters. And of course their tour got canceled. So they lost all that money. They were, they had been set up to do 30 dates in London in the spring and 30 dates in the fall. And they already had gotten apartments. Although fortunately the Michael Jackson, the company bought, got them apartments in London. So they they weren't they weren't out having to get the apartments, but that it just it just was it's a bummer. I mean, it's a bummer that he died, um, but uh, and and Judith, poor Judith, you know, she just was devastated, really really tough. Um, so let's see. I'm going to take off. I'll leave this up. We'll uh, we'll see how many subs we got and everything. Uh, the my view you know, view count um, like for. They do this, you know, like analytics, like 20, the 48 hour period had gotten up to like 26,000 views per 48 hours and um, and revenue follows that. And normally, you know, I'm in around the 12,000 range and it got up to 26,000 because I started doing this. And this doesn't have that much because when I when we look at the view counts on these, it's like 600 or so. That's not enough to, you know, to. Two of these, that's 1,200. That's not enough to get it up to, you know, 26,000. So that's purely YouTube analytics promoting my videos and pretty much just one video. But uh, now it's already dropped down to 19,000. So it's it's like, <laughs> it's like the COVID. We've, you know, YouTube is, <laughs> my YouTube uh, analytics has, has flattened the curve. Dang it. That's one curve I didn't want to flatten. So anyway, <laughs> you guys are, Yes, the stuffing makes the cookie 100%. So anyway, I love you guys. I really appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. I will I will talk to you later. I might be on Discord a little bit. Um, I, I probably need to scan this and post it in Discord. I may do that later. Okay? And then I may do... Uh, I'm getting requests for uh, them elsewhere. People don't... Oh, let me... Oh, sorry. You want the Discord link... Here's the Discord link one more time. Invite people, copy. Here it is. And there, most of these people will be on the Discord after this. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. Diane, remember the story for tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.